Plenty of room. Uh, there's only eight. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's only one more person coming. You can face whatever you want. Okay. Anyway, it's just like, it just, when you're cold and damp and all that, you just have less patience than usual. Yeah. Anywhere you want to be. There's only one more person coming. If she makes it, yeah. We've we got plenty of room. It's just with eight. Well, and Lana was going to come, so it would have been nine, but with eight. I like to turn this way instead of the other way. More, there's a lot more room. Maybe no, it's much more space for it. Blocks and traps. Uh, Charmin, what do you think about that? She's in your spot. <laughs> well, okay. I guess since it's her, right? Yeah. Oh, Nobody okay. else. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's just almost a empty in here. Let's run. <laughs> It is time now. I'm sorry we're a little a minute late starting. People at home, if anybody's out there, we're here. It's Friday, the 23rd of April. We were discussing what year it was, but it is 2021. So <laughs> get comfortable and, and be sure to grab blankets if you want to sit on. And if you have blocks at home, you know, have those handy and just get easy. Get to where you feel really comfortable to sit, letting yourself lengthen up and close your eyes gently, really gently. Let your eyes close, but then see if you can just bring your gaze down with your eyes closed so that you feel yourself looking down a little bit, release. Let yourself relax around your eyes. Imagine you're bringing your gaze back forward with your eyes closed and look a little bit to your right with just your eyes. Come on back into center and let them look over to the left. And then come on back into center and then see if you can look up a little bit. And then look back down again just to let your eyes now after that little bit of movement then see if you can just release. Let your, your eyes look wherever feels the most releasing for you and come into watching your breath now. See if you can feel the breath coming into the belly. If it helps you to take a couple of breaths where you inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth, sometimes that helps you release your jaw and all around your mouth a little bit. Just enjoy watching your breath coming in and going out through your nose. And on your next Exhale, come on forward into a little seated forward bend. And you know, adjust your legs however you need. You can stay up high, you can keep your hands there in front of you, giving you support. You can walk further forward if it feels good to fold a little more deeply forward. But, and see if you can shift just a little bit side to side. Let yourself just shift a little once you get a little forward. And then release back into center. And again, see if you can just Breathe now, watching your breaths in and out. Whether you like to go ahead and fold, you might even want to bring your head down onto a block or fold farther forward. It's up to you. Pay attention to how your back feels. One more breath here. And then we'll slowly let ourselves come all the way on back up and bring your hands on out beside you, lightly touching the ground there. And let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline. 
And on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. Good. And let's inhale our hands straight out from our shoulders. Flex your hands a little bit. You can soften your elbows if you need to there. And then bring your hands on forward of your shoulders so that you just keep the hands flexed. And then let one set of fingertips face down and one up, right? Because we're just going to pedal our hands a little bit every time you inhale or you exhale. Just waking up through the wrists, letting yourself feel your arms all the way up into the biceps, into your shoulders as you just easily pedal through. And then finish off, let yourself flex through both hands again. Spread your fingers nice and wide. And then open the hands on back out so that they're coming straight out from your shoulders. Bend your elbows, bring your hands in towards your shoulders. And then when you exhale, press out into your hands. And see if you can engage your belly, draw the low belly in when you do. So inhale, bringing the hands in towards you. And as you exhale, imagine you're really pushing two walls away from you. So you really have to engage there. And then one more time, inhaling, coming in. And on the exhale, pressing out. And then we'll release our arms on down, hands behind you. Walk on back a little bit. You can stay up on fingertips or you can come down flat to your hands. Let your chest come on forward. Bring your gaze up a little bit or a lot if you want to. You know, be mindful of your neck. So try not to feel like you're tensing up your neck, right? Just be mindful of letting yourself open through the chest. And then we'll come on back up, take a nice inhale, and on the exhale, twist to your left. Bring yourself on around into that twist, and feel the sitting bones drawing down. You can look more behind yourself if you choose to, or you can let yourself stay looking more to the side. It really depends on how you feel this morning. One more inhale, and on the exhale, we'll move on through center and all the way into the other direction. So finding that twist there lengthening up one more breath and as you exhale come on back to stop at center again and we're going to switch the cross bar legs so if you need to stretch your legs out in order to do it let yourself stretch out and move to the other side other leg in front and then flex through your feet a little bit press down into the outside edges just gently so you're engaged into your hips and then come on forward again so letting yourself release into that seated forward bend. Again, how far you go up to you. Once you get forward a little bit or even a lot more, see if you can let your shoulders, your torso shift a little bit again, side to side. So you come a little more into the side waist and each side of the low back there. Come back into center. Let yourself be there with your breath. Let your head hang if it feels okay to do that. And we're going to walk ourselves on back up from here, letting your fingertips come out onto the floor beside you. We're going to inhale here at center. And on the exhale, we're going to twist to our left again. So as you come around, wherever your right hand goes is up to you. It can be in the midline. It can be over to your left knee. Take an inhale here. But now, when you exhale, keep in the twist, but turn your head to look back over your right shoulder. And then see if you can lower your chin down just a little bit. Now, if that bothers your neck, don't do it. But if you can find a little bit of release there in the upper back, in between the shoulder blades, do. One more breath. And then rise the chin on back up, and we're going to unwind and come on back into center with everything, head and shoulders around, inhaling at center. And on the exhale, we're going to twist the other way. So left hand again comes either the midline or across to your right knee. Okay, stay there for a breath. Let yourself enjoy that twist in the middle of your back. And now on your next exhale, turn just your head to look over towards the left. And then look down a little bit so that you draw your chin down a little towards your shoulder. It might get a really nice place in your neck there stretched out. If you're like, nothing feels nice about this, then don't do it. Good. So one more breath there. 
and then rise back up, chin parallel to the floor. And on an exhale, go ahead and bring everything back around into center again. And let's bring our hands behind us. Clasp your hands and let yourself deeply bend your elbows and squeeze your palms together. So you're squeezing, really squeezing the clasped hands and feel your fingers, like the bones in your fingers squeezing together, your palms, feel your biceps engaging. And then let yourself release, bring the hands out beside you, shake them out just a little bit. Let's stretch our legs out and let ourselves bring our hands now down to the floor behind us and just lift and open your chest here, all right? Just let yourself release and open up here, drawing the chest forward like you have that string attached to your sternum, drawing you forward on a diagonal line. You can look up if you want, you can look forward. And then we'll rise on back up and go ahead and come into a little seated forward bend. You can bend your knees if you need. Let yourself ease forward from your low back. I mean, those of you who want to reach and get to, to your toes, go for it. But take your time. Feel the heels on the ground there. Let yourself just open up a little bit into the backs of the legs. Good, and then we're gonna rise all the way back up and we're coming on around towards our hands and knees. So if you need a blanket underneath your knees, go right ahead. And you know if your wrists bother you, switch how you have your hands, come to fists if you need to, go to forearms if you need to, come on to blocks if you'd like. And just wag your tail a little bit. Let your tail wag a little bit side to side. And when you do, let your head just do what it wants, right? So whatever happens with your head, just concentrate on hip, shifting your hips a little side to side. Let your head do what feels good. And then come on back in to center. Look down between your hands and get yourself set up here to start to move through your cat cows with your breath. So take your time. Feel free to stop and cat or cow if you choose to. Feel free to continuously move if that feels better. But, you know, it is your breath you're moving with. You can move as quickly or as slowly as you choose, of course. Take your time. Feel that tailbone, really. So each time, if you can imagine, you start with your tailbone and then just travel up the spine, whether you're moving up into cat or into your cow. Good. So go ahead and finish off the one you're on. We're going to come into more neutral spine now. And let's come on to our left forearm parallel to the front edge of our mat and stretch our right arm out overhead and bring our forehead down onto our left forearm. Spread your fingers wide, press down gently into your hands. Feel your ribs melting, front ribs melting down towards the ground, coming into this little quarter dog. Feel your shoulders as you press down gently into your right hand and your left forearm. One more breath. And then bring that right hand back so you can push yourself on up and we're just gonna switch sides. So right forearm parallel to the front edge, left hand reaching out overhead, forehead coming down now. Spread the fingers and press down into that left hand, elbow hugs in a little bit of that left arm. Press down into your right forearm there on the ground and feel your hands and let your chest melt down. Feel that stretch through the armpit really. And one more breath. And then bring your left hand back and let your hands come a little forward of your shoulders there in front of you. And then shift like you're coming into a little half for a half a plank here. Knees are down, right? And then shift your hips back a little bit, not going all the way into child's pose, but kind of headed that way. And then come forward again. If you need to kind of change where your hands were to come into coming into like a half plank here, do. And then shift back again. So let yourself, as you inhale again, come forward like you're coming into that half plank. 
and then exhale and shift your hips back. One more time. And this time as we come forward, you can either stay in that half plank. If you want to pick your feet up and be there on the flesh above your knees, you can. Or some of you might want to go ahead and let yourself come through with your chest for a little bit of a cobra here. Totally up to you. You don't need to do it. And then from here, we're going to curl our toes under and reach up and back into a downward facing dog pose. Walk your dog a little bit. Go all the way to the tops of your feet a couple of three or four times, right? So that you press into the tops of your toes. Enjoy finding the backs of your legs here. Go ahead and shift around to find your down dog where you feel really comfortable to be. Feel your elbows hugging in towards each other. Feel your breath coming into your back ribs. And be with your breath, really. Watch your breath all the way in and out. Good, and from here we will bring our left foot forward for a lunge, and you're more than welcome to put your right knee down to get there, and if you wanna grab your blocks to have underneath your hands too. So coming into your lunge and taking your time, Really lining up that front knee, getting your feet the length apart that feels really good for you, up into your hips. Good, and from there, let's straighten that front knee out. Let yourself just feel the left toes float up off the ground. Feel the right heel descending directly behind your foot. Now, if you want more, you can pick your left foot up too and be just on your left heel, if that feels good. You can come into lifting the whole foot up and then slowly bring the left foot down, but keep the toes up if you can. And then let the toes come down too. And we're gonna bend that front knee and come back into the full lunge. And we're gonna switch legs. So bringing that right foot forward, setting up the length of your stance and getting that width just where you're good to be up into your hips. Take your time, really enjoy. And then see about if you can, letting yourself come into a straighter front leg and feel that left heel just descend and lift your right toes up. So at first, keep the foot on the floor, but keep the toes up. Feel the four corners of your foot there into the floor. You can even practice spreading your toes out a little bit if you want. And now it's totally optional to pick the foot up and be on the heel, which shifts your hips back a little bit more and gets you maybe a little more into the backs of your legs. That's optional. Good. Now slowly bring the foot down, but keep the toes up. If you have that foot up, let yourself find the four corners of the foot again. And then let the toes release back down. We're gonna bend that front knee Come back into lunge, and we'll step on forward from here and come into our Uttanasana. So as you make your way into standing forward bend, be mindful. <laughs> if you need to move around a little bit, do. Kind of let yourself be easy to get your feet just right underneath you. Use your hands on blocks <laughs> if you need, elbows above your knees if you need, or letting your hands release downward if that feels good to you. And feel the weight of your head. Let yourself find that softness through your face. Softness all around your eyes and all around your mouth. All across your forehead. Feeling the feet equal into the floor here now. One more nice, full, deep breath. And then we'll bring our hands up to our hips. We're gonna bend our knees and rise up and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. So take your time, but coming into mountain pose, if you need to adjust a little bit, do. If you need to let yourself get your feet just a little different placement there, bringing your hands softly together. Letting yourself just imagine you're looking out towards the horizon. If you find that sense of your head being very light up there on top. 
And like if you if you start to bring your chin down and round your upper back, you feel a huge difference if you just do that for fun. Same thing if you kind of throw your head back or tuck your chin back a little bit, you can feel what happens with the pelvis. So once you get the hips over the ankles and you're aligned there in your pelvis, everything else just wants to be in place. So if you can just let yourself give your body a little bit of time here to adjust. Enjoy feeling the sense of being equal between your feet all the way up through your legs into your hips. And feeling that nice gentle connection of your hands together in front of your heart. And then we'll unfold our arms on down beside us. And inhale both arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, we're gonna bend our knees and come forward into standing forward bend. Let your next inhale help you find a nice long flat back. Lengthen out through the spine. And we'll step the right foot back and come into lunge here. And inhale, exhale into your downward facing dog pose. So take your time, spread your fingers nice and wide, feel your elbows hugging toward each other. Walk if you need to walk, bend your knees if you need to, let your head turn side to side. Just let that dog just come naturally here. And on the next inhale, let's come on out towards a plank. So coming back to that plank that we found earlier, this time a full one, see if you can bend your right knee, come to the top of your right foot and press into the top of your toes there. And then come on back into that long leg and we're gonna to go to the other side. So you come to the top of the left foot, press into the top of your toes there, the knee's not quite on the floor, and then bring it back up. So take your time, one more breath, and then we're gonna lower down, knees first if you need, elbows right by the wrists. And let's come into a little cobra. You can stay very low. You can even use your hands, not on the floor, you can if you want to use your hands to press up higher, do. Then towards your cobra. And then from here, let's come all the way back down. Now release your arms down alongside you. Turn your palms down towards the floor. And on your next inhale, float up into a little locust pose. Reaching your fingertips and your toes back towards the wall behind you. And then release back down and clasp your hands on your low back, right? And now from here, see if you can inhale up into that locust, keeping your hands together, right? Elbows can be bent. Let yourself be where you can. One more inhale. And on the exhale, we're going to lower back down, bring our hands back by our chest, and make our way back into downward facing dog pose, however you want to get there. Good. And we'll bring our right foot forward to come into lunge. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend. Feet, hips distance apart and parallel. If holding your elbows sounds like a great plan, go for it. If you know that is just not the smartest thing for your own back, don't do it. Just be with your breath. Really let yourself now stay with your breaths all the way through. So it's like you're following your breath all the way in and all the way out. And then we'll release our hands back up to our hips. We're going to bend our knees and rise up. Inhale the arms out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. Unfolding our arms, let's bring our hands behind us, clasp your hands here now, and see if you can just let your gaze rise up. Imagine the chest is coming just a little forward, but really don't let your tailbone tuck underneath you, right? Send the tailbone back, and even as you come into this little bit of a back bend, just make sure that tailbone is dropping down towards between your heels. One more inhale. And on the exhale, bend your knees and come on forward. Now you can stay parallel to the floor or you can keep folding over your legs. And whether your arms will release off your back or not is totally up to you. If it feels good for your shoulders, do. 
And then we're going to release arms down all the way down towards the ground. Inhale into that nice long back, wherever you want your hands to support you. And we'll step the left foot back. We'll come into lunge. And inhale. Exhale into your downward facing dog. Good. Nice elbows hugging in. Nice feeling for your shoulders. Reaching into your sitting bones equally if you need to bend your knees do. And then we'll come on out towards that plank again. Nice and strong. Now this time, see if you can lift one foot up off the floor. Doesn't matter which one. Just a little bit. And then put it back down. See if you can lift the other one up off the floor. Use your belly there. And then let that foot come back down. And we're going to lower down. Knees first if you need. Elbows right by the ribs. And we'll come into that little cobra or higher cobra, depending on you. And then from here, we're going to shift back towards pose of a child. So letting yourself bring your big toes together, knees apart, shifting on back. You don't have to go all the way. And walk your hands over towards the right. And let yourself breathe into the left ribs there. And then walk back through center. And we'll walk over to the left. And breathing into the right ribs. See if you can let your head release however you need to. Good. And then come on back into center again with your arms overhead and feel your elbows. Actually, come up to your fingertips, okay? And let your elbows hug inward. Feel your shoulders there. Feel that kind of hollowing in your armpits. And then we'll come on back up to all fours. We're going to curl our toes under and come on back into downward facing dog pose. From here, we will bring our left foot forward to find lunge. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend again. Lift your toes up. Now, if possible, now don't do this obviously hurt your back, but if you can cross your wrists together, Cross, I'm sorry, make an X, like one wrist over the other, and slip your fingers right underneath the arches of your feet. Your thumbs are on top, your fingers are under, and then curl the fingers upward into the arches of your feet. So it's, it's almost like you're trying to find this release right there through the arches of the feet. And you might find some, you know, it's like if you use a tennis ball or a ball on your feet. You might find some pretty tight feeling places there. So just breathe. If it bothers you, don't do it, obviously. See if you can breathe in and out fully and deeply, easily. One more breath. And then we'll bring our hands back up to our hips, bend our knees, rising on up, and inhale the arms out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. We're going to inhale our hands right up through the midline. Okay, let your arms be as far apart as you need. And then we're going to sit back into a chair pose. So let yourself sit back, and it doesn't matter how deeply you go. Letting your gaze come maybe four or five feet in front of you there on the floor, feeling equal through the feet, all the way up through the legs, into your hips. And then release your arms on down. We're going to twist to our right. Now you can lower your left knee if you want onto your right, I'm uh, sorry, left elbow to your right knee if you want. You don't have to go that low. And then we'll come back up to center, and we're going to go the other way. So again, coming into that twist. Stay equal in your knees, your hips. You can even look if you need to. And then rise back into center. Let's bring our arms back up for chair pose, up by the ears if you can. One more breath. And then press into your feet. Rise on up to standing. Inhale, look up if you can. And on the exhale, folding forward from the hips into your standing forward bend. Let your next inhale lengthen your spine. Exhale, right foot back to lunge, moving with the breath. Inhale. Exhale into your downward facing dog pose. Let your inhale carry you to plank. Your exhale will lower you down. And inhale into your cobra of choice. Exhaling back into down dog. Inhale. Exhale right foot forward to lunge. And inhale. 
Exhale to your standing forward bend. Bend the knees, rising all the way to the top. And let your exhale bring you forward. Inhale, nice long back. Exhale, left foot back to lunge. And inhale, exhale, downward dog. Inhaling out to that plank. Let your exhale again be the lowering. Inhale into that cobra. Exhaling back into down dog. Inhale. Exhale, left foot forward to lunge. And inhale. Exhale, standing forward then. Bend the knees, rising all the way back to the top. And on the exhale, coming forward again. Inhale, find that long back. We're going to come into down dog. Take the time. Jump or walk. Have fun with it. Find your dog. Walk if you need to. Spread those fingers wide. If you need to check your hands out, go ahead and look at them do. Make sure you're fairly equal there. Point your fingers about parallel to each other. And then from here, we're going to bring our left foot forward. We're coming up to warrior one. So have your box handy. In here. Let yourself come on around with your shoulders square towards the front of your mat. And then once you get your feet set, let your arms just hang and then swing a little bit. All right, now to have the arms even swing just a little bit back and forth, you've got to be using the core of the body, right? Or you just be all over the place. So feel that back foot in the floor. Let your arms really release. Let yourself enjoy finding your shoulders over your hips. And if you're like, huh, I want to go just a little bit longer, a little less long with your stance, do it, right? And now from here, we're going to rise the arms forward, bend the elbows, bring the hands behind our head. And then open your elbows wide for a second and let yourself press your head into your hands and maybe let yourself look up a little. Not so much you feel any kind of stress. It should feel really easy and really open. Right? It's the belly's still engaged. There's no pressure in the low back. You're supporting your heavy head, which is like heaven. And just enjoy. And you can stay right here for another couple of breaths in Warrior One. Or you can stretch your arms up and send that pointer finger up if you like that mudra of the hands coming into your Warrior One here. Take your time. Let it feel good. Feel the elbows hugging in if you've got your arms up there. Let everything just come into balance. Let the pose do the work for you. You just, once you get that alignment, be there and breathe. And one more breath. And then start to look forward again. Release your arms on down beside you and behind you and clasp your hands together there, right? And we're gonna bow forward over this front inner leg. So as you do, you may decide you wanna stay up kinda high and then just maybe drop your head or you may want to fold over your inner thigh, and some of you might want to bring your arms off your back into this humble warrior. This is up to you. You don't have to go that far. You go where you can. And then release your hands on down. We're going to find lunge. Hands to blocks if you want, or to the floor. Let yourself find your full lunge now. And we're going to add a twist, a choice. So if you'd like to lift up and bring your right elbow to your left knee and bring your hands into prayer, you can come into that twisted prayer here. Or you can keep your right hand down on the floor of the block and bring your left hand up to your hip or your low back or stretch the arm up. So you find a twist that feels good for you. And I feel really easy to lengthen back through that inner right heel and out through the top of your head. And then we'll release to come on back down to lunge. We're going to make our way back into downward facing dog pose. Walk to the tops of the feet a couple of times. Press into the top of your toes. And then bring your feet a little closer together. Lift your left leg up in the air behind you. Bend the knee and open the hip so that you stack your left hip kind of on top of your right. Let your right heel descend towards the mat. Now, if you want, you can pull the heel in more towards your buttocks and get more in your quad, just pulling that left heel inward. And then extend the leg. We're going to lower that foot back down to the floor, and we're going to do the other side. So the right leg will come up, the knee bends, and then you're going to open the hip. 
Again, it's like you're stacking your right hip on top of your left. You can look under your right arm if you want. And then if you want to pull the heel in, you can flex the foot deeper and just draw the heel in towards the buttocks. And then we'll extend the leg long again. We're going to lower the foot down. Let's come on out for plank. And from here, let's lower down, whether you go through a half or a full push-up. And this time, come on to Sphinx with your elbows under your shoulders. Bring your gaze forward. Let yourself just enjoy a nice, easy, relaxing back bend here. And then bend both your knees. Flex through your feet. Really feel your toes back there. Think about whether you can spread your toes out right now. If your belly's a little bit floating off the floor because you're, you know, using your belly so much to protect your back, that's fine. <coughs> One more breath. And then bring the feet on back down. Bring the hands back under your shoulders, and we're going to come on back into downward facing dog pose. Up to you. If you'd like to come out for a kriya, you can come out to plank and move through for an up dog and move back into down dog. So if you want to do one or two of those or you want to do a vinyasa, go right ahead. Good. And then we'll meet back in down dog. From here, we're going to bring our right foot forward. We're coming up for warrior one on the other side. So take your time. Again, getting your shoulders square, getting your feet aligned, you know, making sure you can get your shoulders around however far around this hip pointer goes. Just feel that back foot in the floor. And now again, remember, you're going to let your arms kind of go. As you do, if you start to lose your balance, then just kind of get it back and find the, the strength that you need to let those arms swing a little bit. Let that feel good. Good. And then from here, we'll bring our hands up, clasp behind the head, open your elbows wide. And then just press your head gently into your hands, maybe let the hands go back. So, so nice just to support yourself there. Really let the neck release and feel if you can a release through your throat. Now, if you want to extend arms up, you can. It's not necessary, but if it feels really good to add the arms going up and send the pointer finger up and hug your elbows in, you can. Opening up through the front of that left hip, feeling the feet very equally into the mat there. One more breath. And then we're going to release our arms on down beside us, bring them behind us to clasp. And again, we're going to bow forward. Now, again, this is up to you how far you go. Go where you can. You can release your arms off your back or not. You can keep your hands down. You can let your arms come off the back if you choose. And then we're going to release the hands on down to find lunge. So again, you're going to let that left heel now reach directly behind you, setting up for that twist, right, of choice. So you can, if you'd like, you can use a block under your hand and bring your right hand on up to your hip or your low back. You can bring that left elbow across to your right knee if you'd rather. You can stretch that right arm up if you have your left hand down. Just play. I feel good. Good. One more breath. And then we'll release to come back into lunge. And we're going to make our way back to down dog from here. You're on your own this time. Do what feels good. If you want to do, come out and come into any vinyasa or kriya. If you want to put your knees down and rest, do it. If you feel like you want to open your hips again, if you feel like you want to let yourself come into a little side plank work, Good, just play with what feels good. And then we'll meet back. Once you finish off, especially if you were doing two sides, finish off what you're doing. Come on back into down dog. And this time we'll bring our left foot forward. Have both your blocks handy here. We're coming up for warrior two. So lining up those heels, bending into that front knee. Take your time for a second. Let, your, let yourself look at your left knee. Bend and straighten. 
right? So really trying to keep the knee consistent. So you don't want to move all over the place, both when you bend and straighten, right? And you don't necessarily have to come all the way straight. You don't really want to lock your knees, but you want to get that sense of the, the knee following the same path, right? Finish off. Find that bend of that front knee where you're really comfortable, the length of stance where you're comfortable. Float your arms on up. Bring your right arm uh, under your left. Come into a little eagle wrap there with your arms or a hug. Just let the shoulders release. And then release the arms on down and we're going to float them on up into warrior two. Reaching out through the fingertips. Feel the feet pressing gently away from each other. Good. Now we're going to straighten the left knee out for triangle here. So thighs are lifting up. Imagine you're trying to lengthen your mat with your feet. And then you're going to reach that left hand for triangle wherever you like to use. Your leg, the block, whatever feels good. Letting your torso come out over that front leg. And then, you know, if your right shoulder bothers you, you can put your hand down on, on your hip. You can let yourself keep the hand straight up. And be mindful of your neck. If it feels better to look down towards your left foot, do. If it feels good to look up, you can look up towards your hand up there. One more breath. And then turn to look at the floor. Bring your right hand down. Now we're just going to walk around to a wide-legged forward bend right from here. So if you need your blocks, use them. <coughs> Let yourself come on around, adjust your stance, and then go ahead and bend a knee at a time. So that you ease your way into one side and then the other. Let your feet be as wide apart as feels good for you. Good. And then release to come back into center. And get your, your legs equal, whether they're equally bent or equally straight. Keep them that way and walk to the right all the way if you can to hold on to the outside of your right ankle or foot. But if you don't get that far, it's fine. Go where you can and stay there and breathe. Let your head release. Let your jaw go. And then walk back through center and we're going to go to the left. So again, if you can get all the way to the foot, you can put your left hand on the outside of the ankle or foot and your right hand on top to draw yourself over. Obviously, if you can't go by that far, don't do it, but just breathe. And then we'll walk on back into center again and come on into your wide-legged, forward bend wherever you're comfortable to be now. Grab support if you need it. Let yourself enjoy feeling your feet equal in the floor. And starting to let go as much as you can through the upper body. Easy, full, deep, complete breaths. Good, one more breath. And from here, walk your hands out a little bit so you can walk back to your left foot. Come on back into your lunge and we'll make our way back into downward facing dog pose from here. Once you're there, again, do what you need to do. If you like to do some vinyasas or kriyas, go for it. Be mindful, put your knees down if you'd rather and rest so that you're really paying attention to what feels good for you today, not something you feel like you should do, right? And if you're tired, just let yourself kind of enjoy being tired, right? So, <laughs> one more breath. Finish off and meet back in down dog. And we are gonna bring our right foot forward and we're coming up for warrior two on the other side, so 
letting yourself rise on up. Take your time to get that alignment here of the length of stance you want and finding that alignment of that front knee. And then again, that bending and straightening. So if you watch, knees sometimes want to do a little bit of weird thing. You know, sometimes they want to, especially sometimes when you straighten, they kind of go a different direction. And some and structure has a lot to do with it, but just see if you can just control a little bit of feeling that same pathway of the knee, both when you bend and you straighten. And then the next time that you come into that knee bent for warrior two, let it stay. Float your arms on up. Bring your left arm under your right. Come into either a hug or a full eagle or a half eagle wrap. Letting yourself release there between the shoulder blades on your back. Good. And then we're going to let our arms release down and inhale the arms up and out. And really feel like your arms are being supported from underneath. Bringing your gaze right out over the top of that right hand. Feeling the left hand reaching equally back. Enjoying the strength of the pose. Now we're going to straighten the right knee. And we're going to bring that right hand down for triangle. So again, whether you use your leg, maybe you'd rather grab a block, have a block in front of or behind your foot. Let your torso extend out over that front leg. Feel the thighs lifting up towards the hips. And remember, you know, everybody's different. Sometimes your neck bothers you and it feels better to look down or to look out, right? Sometimes it's fun to try to think of looking up towards the ceiling or towards your hand up there. If you press that hand a little forward, it might help. One more breath here in your triangle pose, really extending. Good. And then we're going to let ourselves turn to look down. Bring your left hand down a little bit so you can walk around into that wide-legged forward bend again. This time, turn your toes out like a goddess. Bend your knees pretty deeply. Let yourself then shift your hips a little side to side. So you're actually pretty wide. Your knees are bent pretty deeply. Don't shift hard, just a little bit so it feels really good. And then come on back into center. So you really got yourself into quite a position there in the hips. Let it feel really good. And then come into straighter legs. Turn your toes forward. Let yourself get more parallel with your feet. Adjust your stance. And again, make your way to where you want to be for your wide-legged forward bend. Right? So in Prasarita Padottanasana, everyone... It's different as far as, so it's like every pose, but you do really want to try to find a way to release your upper body. Sometimes support, just a little bit, is all you need. It can be under your forearms, it can be under your head, your blocks. You can have your hands on your ankles. You can walk your hands behind you if you'd rather. Good. So one more breath. And then we're going to walk our hands back out so we can walk back to the right foot again to find lunge. And back into that downward facing dog pose for final vinyasas or kriyas if you want to do any more. So, you know, that is up to you. Move the way you want. If you're like, wow, well, I've had entirely enough. Put your knees down if you need to. You don't need to do any of it. Good. We're going to meet back in downward facing dog pose. And then from here, think about bending your knees deeply, whether you want to jump or walk yourself to the front of your mat, right? So coming forward with the feet underneath you again. Let yourself bend your knees. Feel your sit bones right over your heels. And then from here, let's bring our hands up to our hips and rise straight up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. 
So enjoy. Now, find your mount pose in your own way. Do what helps. If you like to sway around a little bit, let yourself sway around. If you need to have your eyes opened or have your eyes closed. Enjoy feeling the beating of your heart. Let your breath settle down. And in other words, allow the body to find its own balance, really. And then we'll let our arms unfold on down, shake out, do whatever you need to do. We're gonna make our way into a wall right now. So there's plenty of room, you might have to not, no, actually it's very easy. Everybody's right by the wall. So take your time and bring your man on in and grab, grab one and grab two blocks. Grab both just for the heck of it. And let's turn our right shoulder towards the wall. And let yourself put your blocks in front of you. In case you want them there, you might not, you might. Okay. And from here, we're going to cross our left ankle above our right knee. And we're going to think about sitting back with our hips and forward with our chest, like you're coming into that chair pose on one leg, right? So right hand is on the wall, left ankle is crossed above the knee. And then, yeah, the other right maybe. And then, and then you decide, do you want to try to balance a little bit here? You can if you want. You can bring your hands to your heart or not. A bad balance day like me, don't do it, just do what feels good. And then, of course, if you want to go lower, you can bring your hands down to the blocks. If not, don't do it, right? Now, if you can go pretty low on the blocks, you might be able to hook your left toes around the outside of your right upper arm. And if you do that and you push like the top of your toes into the outside of your arm there, it is a really get good open hip release there. So you don't have to do that, obviously. It means, too, that you have to bend that right knee deeper. So that's not for everybody. So be where you can. One more breath here. Now we're going to come back up. Use the ball if you need to help you. Cross your left thigh over your right for a little eagle. Now, you don't have to do a full eagle. You don't have to wrap your foot around the back of your right leg, obviously. You can just cross your thigh over your thigh and squeeze your thighs together. Maybe balance a little bit there. Grab a block if you want. Put it underneath your left toes if you want to so that you can come into balance. Maybe even bringing your right arm over your left and finding your full wrap. All right, don't do that if it's too much. Come out of it if you need. Take your time. Good. And we're going to release to come up. And we are going to turn around. Yay. So change your blocks around to the other side. Right away, before you even think about it, cross your right ankle above your left knee because it'll be a huge relief to sit back. Right? So now you're in the figure four on the other side. You can stay right here. You can balance if you want. You don't have to. Keep your hand on the wall if you'd rather. Now again, this coming down with your hands towards the floor of the blocks, totally optional. You know, as you come forward, if you're like, no way, don't do it. If it feels good to think of wrapping your toes around the outside of your left arm, you can bend that left knee as deeply as you choose. And if you know, you know that's not for your knee or for your hip, don't do it or your back. Now, we're going to slowly come up. So again, use the wall to help you if you need. You're going to cross your right thigh over your left. Again, you can always slip a block back there and let your right toes come on the block and squeeze your thighs towards each other and sit back with your hips. Come into that eagle wrap if you want with your arms. Left arm over right. Letting yourself squeeze your thighs towards each other. Or you can wrap your right foot 
around behind your leg. Now, you know, be really mindful of that move. Even if it's easy for you, it puts a lot of pressure on that left knee. Good. And when you've had entirely enough, come on out of it. Turn, move your blocks out of the way. Turn your back to the wall. And right away, come on down into a child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart. Let yourself release however you need for your, into your child's pose. So if you want to stretch your arms out, if you want to use your hands as a pillow, if you feel like you want to bring your arms back, or bend your elbows, put your hands on your upper back maybe, you know, just be mindful. Mindful of your shoulders. Just release into your breath. Nice. And then stretch your arms back on overhead. We're going to come on up to all fours, curl our toes under, and we're going to come on into a down dog with our heels up the wall. Now, this might be enough. You might want to bend your knees and just stay right there. If anybody wants to lift a leg up the wall, you can curl your toes under. And some of you might even want to walk your hands back towards the wall. So you come just a little more into like doing a split up the wall. Don't do that if it's too much, but if it feels good, it can actually release all that hip work we were just doing. It can help. It really releases the hamstrings, of course. And then you can switch when you want to. If you're like, well, I'm not doing either one of those, you don't have to switch, right? So come to where you can. I'll obviously put your knees down and rest anytime you need to. And if you want to play a little bit more with being in an inverted, you can come down and rest, and then you can go up again if you'd rather be on your forearms. Be on your forearms, right? So if your hands and your wrists are going huh, enough entirely, don't, don't, you know, come out of them and be on your forearms maybe and play a little bit there. But only if you choose. Obviously, sitting and resting is great. <laughs> Being in child's pose and resting. Remember, it's Friday. What is it about Friday? Even if you, you know, don't work anymore. Friday is always a happier sounding day. Years of training. Years of training. So finish off. If you need to go up again and have a few seconds to do that, do. If you're done, we're going to come into a little bit of hero work here, which might mean that you want to sit on a block between your feet back here. Or you may even want to sit on two blocks up higher so that you're not so bent into your knees, right? When you're sitting either on a block or two blocks, and you remember these blocks have lowest height, they have the second height, you know, so you can kind of experiment with the height you want to be. I mean, some of you might want to sit all the way down on a blanket between your heels or all the way to the floor. More power to you. But your knees are facing forward. You just don't want your knees to splay out, right? Your knees are forward in front of your hips. And then you're just going to let yourself allow this pose to let your spine just naturally come into alignment. Because of the way you're supported, you can lengthen up through the crown of your head. And let yourself just feel, because see how, feel how your tailbone is just a little bit naturally when you're sitting like this, reaching back a little. It, ha it restores that bit of a natural curve. It keeps you from tucking your tailbone forward and rounding into the upper back and the lower back, really. So it's nearly impossible to do it in this pose, actually. It feels so good. One more breath here, lengthening upward. And then just let your right arm Come on up overhead and let's 
move a little to the side, stretch to the left. Now, if you're close enough to the floor, you can put your hand, fingertips to the floor and let yourself have support. Or you can, if you have, you're on one block, you can use your other block, or you can just have your hand on your leg or in your lap, whatever. So one more breath here. And then we're gonna rise back up and we're gonna switch arms and we'll just release over to the other side. So again, you've got a little bit of support wherever you need it. Don't overdo, breathe into the left side. And then we'll slowly come back up. Now this is up to you. If you can come back a little bit, maybe even just put your hands like on your, on your feet. Maybe I like to put my fingertips into the arches of my feet, hug my elbows towards each other and look up a little bit. I mean, some of you might actually, if you're not up high, too high, want to put your hands back on the floor and draw your chest forward and open up there. So that's up to you. Be mindful of your neck. Sometimes that wall back there is like heaven. So if you're close enough to the wall, you can use it. Good. We're going to come on back. We're going to make our way down onto our bellies on the floor from here. So take your blocks on out. Bring yourself on down. Good. Bring, bring your hands to stack up. Rest your head on your hands for a second and bend your right knee. Let yourself just release there. Just bend the knee. Feel the belly engaging. Now you got your quads kind of open just now from Hero. So if you want, you can come into half bow, reaching back with your right hand and get hold of the top of that foot. Now you can come up as high with the upper body or stay down as low as you want. Pressing the foot into the hand. If you want to go up higher in the upper body, you can bring your left forearm down more towards your waist and that will, can rise you up higher. Good, we're going to come down. We're going to switch legs. So again, once you bend that left knee and reach back, decide if you can find the foot or get it, you can decide how much you want to come up with the upper body. Just gently pressing the foot into the hand. Good. And then when you're ready, coming on down, take your time, rest for a second with your forehead on the floor. And then bend your knees. Now, if you want to do a full bow, you can reach back, get your feet, press your feet into your hands, let your feet rise up a little bit. You don't have to do a full bow. You can rest. You can do a locust if you'd rather. And then we're going to release. Let your legs come long, and we're going to roll onto our backs, all right? So kind of get yourself situated on your mat to be able to roll over, bend your knees, and bring your knees in towards your chest. Let your knees come side to side. Now when your knees go to the left, see if you can let your head turn to the right a little bit, and then vice versa. So you just ease your way and you let your neck release, you let yourself release your low back, your hips. And then come on back with the knees and the head to center and send the feet on up for a little happy baby pose. And you decide here how you want to come into happy baby. You can let the, the legs be bent really deeply with the hands on your feet or you can put your hands on the back of your thighs. You know, you may decide to straighten your legs out even once you're there, do a little wide angle. In other words, it is time definitely to let yourself Pay attention to what your own body needs here to release. And that could be anything. You might need a twist instead, you know? If you need another back bend after all that craziness, you know, you're more than welcome to come into bridge or up bow or, you know, just be mindful. Maybe you'd rather do a plow pose, you know? Maybe you'd rather let yourself release knees side to side. Take your time. I'm going to start to get some lights off and 
and then I'll start to head around to see if anybody, once you start to get ready for Shavasana, if anybody needs anything, blanket or bolster, you know, you have the ball right there. If you are feeling like really odd having yourself turn this way for Shavasana and you don't want to be this way, you can turn around. And uh, if you feel like a little bit of a blanket under your head sounds good and you don't have one way that if you need a bolster. I have a bolster. Oh, you don't? Okay. So just be mindful. Let it feel like you can release as much as possible here. Yeah, I, I just playing with where I'm okay. my legs. Right. So my knees are like just so sore. Just sore. Yeah, I'm just too much. Uh huh. Yeah. Dampness creeps in. <laughs> <laughs> so just let yourself be with your breath. Accepting your breaths in and out. For those of you at home, my battery is actually going out here on my phone, so I'm going to have to close out before I come back, so you can stay in Shavasana as long as you like if you're at home. Just be mindful, give yourself time to benefit, and <clears throat> come back easily when you're ready. <clears throat> 